quite make it. Oh, oh, oh. Cut it again. In 10 minutes of football, he's had three marks and coming up for his fourth kick. Blues by seven points. Nice. We're being joined here by AFL legend and Carlton legend, of course, Anthony Kudafidis. Kuda, thanks for coming on. My pleasure, Cooper. Great to be on, mate. Now, this might be an interesting thing to bring up first, but do you still do your tipping with uh, Lucas and the crew? Yeah, I did it this year. Yeah, I started many years ago with my daughter, Monique, and uh, she yeah. decided to put in, and Lucas wanted to join while I was doing it with her, and uh, then it became just uh, Lucas and I, but it's getting a little bit harder with him too, because... Uh, to find the time to do it. So I'm not sure if it's the last one we did grand final day. Um, yep. We'll see next year if we want to continue to do it. Yeah, so obviously now we'll go move on to more about yourself. So you obviously played a long time ago. You finished at the end of 2007, played 278 games. Um, first, well, obviously it was a long time ago. 1992 was your first season in the AFL. Obviously it's different to now, but what was it like back then being drafted to Carlton? Yeah, I didn't get drafted. I lived in the Carlton zone. So at the age of 14, I got a letter from the Carlton mm. Football Club to try it in their junior development squad. And so I played two years under 15 there. And then they invited me down to the under 19s at Carlton back in the day before TAC, whatever they call it now. I don't know what they call yeah. the under 18 competition. And uh, yeah. so then I played under 19s. And then, yeah, from there, they offered me a senior contract. So by the age of 14, I was sort of linked to Carlton because of the zone that I was in. So it was just before the draft days. So a lot of the people that I played, played with and against the Till Cup got drafted, but I was already because Carlton had signed me up earlier. So it was a great time because the club was so mm. successful. I had so many decades of uh, success at the football club. So the culture was unbelievable. And so I walked into a fantastic club at the right time. Mm. And uh, the first 12 years of my uh, career were just unbelievable there at the footy club. And, uh, yeah, so I was very lucky and very fortunate. I got to learn from some of the best players, uh, not only Carlton players, but, you know, great AFL players. Mm. Obviously, your career highlights, career highlights speak for themselves. I've got a list here. I know you don't want to pump yourself up, but I will. You won the Lee Matthews Trophy, the most valuable player in 2000. Uh, the Robert, Wen Robert Reynolds Trophy in 2001 and 5. Two-time All-Australian, Carlton captain for a few years, leading goal kicker, premiership player. Um, what's the, one of the most fondest memories for his time at Carlton? The greatest though was the premiership. There's no doubt about that. I never yeah. imagined it. As a young kid, I wanted to play AFL, but I, uh, you know, used to watch the grand finals every year re religiously. And uh, that was uh, marked off in the calendar. No matter what was happening, I was always going to watch grand finals. I could not wait for it. And uh, there I was at the age of 22, 1995. You know, it was an unbelievable experience mm -hmm. to run out there. Geelong had lost, I think, three at three grand finals previous to that and I think this was their fourth one that they lost so they were like mm. a phenomenal team and they were actually favourites that year I don't know how when we mm. had only lost two games for the entire year but uh, yeah. yeah we just we were just you know ready to rock and roll a bit like what Geelong were on grand final day this year we were just so mm. ready for this grand final premiership and uh Nothing, if anything came close to that, it was a 99 prelim final, but that was probably still yeah. had a bit of distance between the feeling of winning a premiership in that 1999 uh, prelim final. Yeah, I, I did, didn't mention all your accolades because there's far too many, but uh, what was it like being inducted in the Australian or the AFL Hall of Fame in 2014? Now, look, that was obviously another career highlight, I think, to really... Mm close and you know close the locker and say you know that was it uh i never you know halfway through 1994 so I'd, i was on the list for three and a half years and still struggling to become a regular senior player and i got dropped halfway through 1994 i thought it was the end of my career and so what evolved and happened after that was unbelievable beyond uh, my imagination and um yeah i never would have imagined three and a half years into my career when i was struggling to get a you know senior game that Mm. I would have then become an AFL Hall of Famer. So I was very blessed and lucky. And, uh, you know, hard work and persistence and uh, a lot of ups and downs, it, uh, it got me there. And uh, that was a great closure to my career at the AFL Hall of Fame. Individually, what do you think was your first or your best ever game individually like from an individual performance? And there was a few, but probably the North Melbourne game, I think, year 2000, when I had 38 positions and kicked five mm. goals. Uh, we mm. hadn't been in North Melbourne since 1995. And so... Year 2000, we'd won 13 games in a row that year. Not not at that stage, but you know, North Melbourne were one of the obstacles while we were you know, striving to, to win as many games as we did. And, uh, yeah, they 
they were just a phenomenal team and who had the edge over us. And that year there, Princess Park, we beat them. So, mm. yeah, there was a reason why we sort of come to age that year. I mean, they beat us in the grand final in 99. And, um, yeah. and then, I mean, if Essendon were there in the grand final, they probably would have won because they were a far superior team. But North Melbourne, mm. to their credit, they were so consistent throughout the 90s. Um, yeah, so that was probably my um, best game that I played, followed by maybe the Sydney Swans game and then another game I played against West Coast at Princess Park where I took 18 marks on the wing and I took a mark with 12 seconds to go when we're only one point in front, so I sort of saved the game for the Blues. It's funny you mentioned that game where you took 18 marks. I was doing some research just to make sure and that was actually one of the first things that actually popped up. So um, that, that clearly was a great game for you and uh, you had plenty of good games. Um, we've got some other questions here about yourself as well. Um, a few people wanted me to ask you, ask you this um, about your athletics background and how that helped you um, get into your AFL journey. Yeah, I started footy at the age of eight in winter and then I watched my brother compete in athletics in the summer for half a season. I had the, And then I had the courage to get out there and start competing. And uh, yeah, by the time I was um, grade five, I was a state high jump champion and uh, loved mm-hmm. athletics and uh, did it every year until I signed my footy contract. I was at one stage Australian champion high jumper and uh, Australian champion hurdler and I won quite a few multi events which is like decathlon so I had a really good yeah. athletics career and uh, got invited to a college uh, in America uh, under yep. a scholarship and uh, yeah but you know Colton then offered me a contract so I made the right decision and although mm-hmm. I loved athletics dearly and I had a great junior career I may have gone on to maybe represent Australia at the Olympics I don't know uh, but certainly was on the way to be able to do that, which would have been an absolute thrill, but nothing compared to, uh, you know, what I was able to achieve at Carlton. Obviously, you played under some good coaches, uh, David Park and Dennis Pagan, Wayne Brent, to name a few. Who was the best coach or and why were, like, for your time there? Uh, look, David Parkin was, uh, you know, great. I mean, we didn't see eye to eye early on, but he was great. Mm-hmm. But the, Wayne Brinton was the one who taught me more about the game than any, any of the other coaches and just... Yeah. Loved his training. I loved the environment and loved that he built up so many players from average players to outstanding players. Yeah. He just put in so much time and effort into everyone and just understood game plans and how to, how to uh, you know, use our talents to overcome the opposition. And he was just phenomenal. So between him and Wayne Britt, uh, sorry, Wayne Britton and Barry Mitchell, yeah. you know, my two greatest mentors, I always say that. They taught me more about the game than anyone else. So obviously you're very good Mets fans, Chris. Do um, outside of him, who who else do you love playing alongside with when you did play for Carlton? Oh, there was a lot of great players. I mean, Glenn Manton was another one of my you know teammates that I used to enjoy hanging around with. A very funny man, and uh, mm. yeah, so there was Ange, but there was all these other. I mean, there was a lot of other players like you know we went on many footy trips with Matty Hogg and Matthew Allen and Fraser Brown, and uh, you know the list of players that were just. I had I was really good friends with uh, you know Nick Stevens and uh, he's Scotland towards the end of my career. Just I had a great time, met so many great great uh, friends that uh, they're going to be lifetime friends for me. Also oh, now with Carlton this season, obviously you've been to a fair few games and I noticed that as well. That uh, you were doing really devastating how that last round of the season finished with Carlton this year with Jamie Elliott. He seems to not only annoy Bomber fans and then he's done it to you guys as well. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean Collingwood, mm. as much as I dislike them. <laughs> yeah, I have the utmost respect for what they were able to do this year and this season. And uh, yeah. they were just unbelievable. From where they came from to where they ended and could have easily won a premiership if they maybe overcome Sydney. Look, Geelong were just too good mm. that I think on the day they probably would have beaten anyone. But yeah, I just thought before that if there was anyone who was going to be a threat to Geelong, it was Collingwood. And they showed it in their first final. And so it was devastating because all year I was thinking we're going to make finals finally. My son and I were mm. just so wrapped. We just could not wait to see the Blues play mm. finals. But right at that last second, the Bulldogs were able to win by enough and we were, you know, lost by that, mm. that smallest of margins of one point that we used mm. to do to Collingwood back in the days. <laughs> um, yeah, so unfortunately it wasn't the B, but they just got a foundation for an unbelievable team at the moment. And uh, the window is certainly mm. open. I just hope they can maximise it and win one, mm. two or three premierships coming up. They're capable of doing it. It's uh, mm. whether they can or not, that's a different story. Obviously, you would have been pretty happy though with the improvement of guys like Harry Mackay and Charlie Kerno both signing long-term deals. And I know the back last, probably the last five weeks of the season with Carlton was disappointed. We're pretty happy with the progress though from the, at least the first part of the year. Oh, the first part was unbelievable. They were looking so mm. strong. I was thinking top four and they may have even yeah. sneaked 
stuck in a premiership. That's how I was thinking because at their best, they can equal it to, to any other team in the competition, but just, you know, the, the way they go up and down. But they had a lot of injuries, so they had a few excuses this year. Yeah. But great to see the boys sign long-term. They're going to be playing together for a long time, and I'm sure once they retire, we're going to look back and go, wow, how lucky we were to see them two boys play together. For Charlie to do what he did this year after missing mm. two years with injury, that is... Yeah. beyond uh, anything that I could have thought. So who knows what's to come with Charlie. It's, it's going to be a really exciting period to watch the two boys play. So what if you had to pick an area of Carlton that's maybe is a weakness or an area they should try and bolster, what area do you think they would be? Because obviously they're well-stocking key position. Yeah, I mean, they're looking for a couple of wi- uh, wingers. So maybe a little bit more. Takers. Yeah, they've got a great uh, midfield. Mm. The defence maybe, maybe like right. one. Hey, yeah, the ruck here, possibly, yeah, actually, the ruck is probably one as, as good as the boys are doing. I think just a little bit more dominance there. If they can come and improve, though, um, yeah, maybe, maybe they might be the difference, too, at the end of the day. So we'll see what happens. We'll just finish off with this, Kudu. So I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, you got a fitness program. What's that been like, and how did that end up getting set up? And you can plug anything you want. <laughs> yeah, no, no, the Kudu Fit, yeah, it's all based around the Herbalife Nutrition. And uh, I train a uh, group. A group of people, um, mm. Monday and Thursday in Bandura at 7 p.m. and Wednesday at Mernda at 7 p.m. And yep. they've been doing our fit clubs for quite a long time, on and off. But, uh, yeah, we, we've helped so many hundreds and hundreds of people, whether whether they come and train or whether it's our online challenges about nutrition or we've helped hundreds and hundreds of people along my journey in the last 11 years mm. doing this business. So I love what I do, and uh, I try to inspire people to just keep themselves uh, ha- healthy and happy. Because um, the times are tough out there, and I feel it too, and I'm vulnerable like anyone else. But we just do our very best that we possibly can. Yeah, I've just noticed too that you raise the bat next season, the the uh, like the cricket milestone, the 50 mark. Um, you look nothing like you near that age, so you look very fit and young uh-huh. and yeah, uh, and very well. Crew, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thanks, Kip. I appreciate it, mate. Looking, I don't know if I'm looking forward to the 50s, mate. But anyway, it is coming, so I've got to get used yeah. to it. You look nothing like 50. Thank you very much, Kuda. Thanks, buddy. See you, mate. See ya.